Hello, this is Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Talk number 318, and I'm super excited today because they have just announced the Masterpiece series in Kaladesh. Incredible new expedition-like cards that are going to be in every major set that is a standard set from here on out, at least for the foreseeable future. These look amazing. Why is Wizards doing these? Well, there's three reasons, and I'm going to critique each of those reasons. Number one is keeping standard standard accessible. There's lots of ways to keep standard accessible. I really like the event decks, the clash packs, things that put the major cards into standard in a much larger number so that people can get those playable cards that they need. I really like these inventions. I like expeditions, but they're a lot like this cat over here. They're a nice little addition, but they don't actually help keep the price of standard down. Number two, they say that they're trying to get players access to older cards. Expeditions are a fail here. They don't work. There are lots of ways to get older cards to players. And don't get me wrong, I like the expeditions. Expeditions are great. These inventions are going to be wonderful, but the very, 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 very small number of them that come into the market as these are really super rare has very little impact compared with the successful ways to get cards into players' hands, which are from the vault, Conspiracy, and the Master series. Eternal Masters is working. Conspiracy has dropped the price of Berserk significantly, and Dark Depths is 50% lower in price than it was before the From the Vault. There's lots of ways to get cards into the hands of players, but these expeditions or inventions barely even touch the market. Before we get to number three though, what will the actual price impact here be? And there are really four categories of cards. There are cards like Cloudstone Curio, which we're gonna see the foil drop. It's gonna be a little bit easier to get that card, but it wasn't that tough to find the card. There's gonna be cards like Chromatic Lantern, which short term, because it's an EDH card, will have a price drop on the foils and people will want this version more. But long term, it will go back up in value. And I would not worry about liquidating Chromatic Lanterns because every EDH player who plays multicolor decks likes this card, or at least 80% of those EDH players do. Crucible of Worlds, absolutely no impact. This is a card with a giant following. Lots of people want it, and a few awesome looking foils isn't gonna affect it. And Mox Opal, which is a four of in several competitive decks, this is not going to affect the price. We had the price of Mox Opal come down because of the Modern Masters printing, and that's what really affects price. This will not affect much outside of how difficult it is to sell a foil currently. There are gonna be people looking to unload their foils and pick up the expeditions instead. The number three reason that they gave is providing an alternatives for deck building. In other words, adding some cool looking bling to decks and it is successful there. These look awesome. They look amazing. Success on number three. I'm glad they're doing it. There are other ways to accomplish the other things that they're trying to do here. Now we've got five of these that I'm a little bit less than excited about. Wizards must believe that these are gonna be powerhouses in standard. Otherwise, they wouldn't have put them in here. These are gonna be the least expensive of them until one or two of these breaks out in standard. And my guess is the Cataclysmic Gear Hulk is going to be a powerhouse. Each of these has potential to be really powerful in standard, but then the value will go way up short term, and then when they drop out of standard, they're gonna move into that category of card that people like for EDH, and those just drop incredibly when they drop out of standard. All of the artwork on these is incredible. I'm glad that they put really cool artwork on them, and these are cards that I'm gonna watch for my top 10 Kaladash list specifically and watch tournament results. If one of these starts to get played really heavily in tournament winning decks, it will shoot way up. Now we're gonna go through each of the other cards which are established, talk about their value a little bit and the inclusion in here. I'm starting with my least excited cards in here and moving on to the cards that I'm super excited about. Cloudstone Curio, this artwork is stunning. It's amazing, it's wonderful. It's not a card that I'm that excited for. It's really a combo piece in some modern fringe builds and in EDH builds. 
there's going to be a small group of people who really want one of these, but this is going to be one of the least sought after cards. Static Orb. Oh, I could have been happy if they never, ever, ever reprinted this card again. This is a miserable card to play against. The artwork here is stunning. I just don't like the card. It is the grindiest of grindy in EDH, and the whole table will hate you for playing it. If you want to play competitively, I understand throwing this in, but this is a rough card. Champion's Helm. I did not realize that this was a $10 card. This is an EDH favorite. People really, really like this in EDH. It's a solid inclusion in here for EDH players. The artwork on it is nice, but not stunning, as some of the other cards in this set are truly stunning. Solemn Simulacrum. We have very similar artwork on this, and I was surprised at how close the artwork is on this particular card. This is an EDH All-Star. Even though it's a $4 card, it's a $20 foil, so a five times premium. That shows how many EDH players love this card, and if the foiling is really nice looking, this will be a very popular card. I wish it had a little more distinct artwork, though, from one of the earlier Solemn Simulacrums out there. Gotlet of Power. Ooh, now we're seeing some cool artwork here. We've got the blue lightning coursing across it. In a foil, this could look amazing. This is another card that a lot of individuals who don't play EDH don't realize that it's a $15 card. It has a huge casual following. Nice inclusion for the EDH crowd. Rings of Brightheart, an EDH superstar, super popular. I like the new artwork on it. This could easily be a $15 or $20 card, maybe even a little bit higher a few months after these are cracked. Chrome Mox, this card is a powerhouse. This is a personal favorite. I am surprised this doesn't see more EDH play because the acceleration of mana is so useful. The problem is this card is banned in Modern, and that really has limited the value and limited the playability of this card. He's edge play in decks in Legacy, and without being played very heavily, it's cool that it says Mox. It's going to have some value to it, but very, very little impact long term. Cards are worth value because they are played, and being banned hurts Chrome Mox a lot. Sculpting Steel. This is a solid, fun EDH card. I like the new artwork on it. It's going to be one of the less expensive cards from this set, but it's a solid inclusion for the casual players. Steel Overseer. This is one of those cards that if it looks really cool in foil, could have some long-term value to it. This card is often played in casual decks and in competitive modern decks. Steel Overseer is just a very powerful card to get your robots powered up. Affinity loves this card. Lightning Grease. This is an EDH powerhouse. People love this card. It's been printed again and again, so it's super cheap. Every player out there that has a pet deck, a deck that they want to put really cool copies of stuff into, that it's all foiled out, this is going to be the premier copy. Really cool looking artwork. Mind's Eye. This is another great casual EDH card, and the artwork on this could look incredible in foil. Look at that hollow projection there. That's exactly what we want to see in a foil. The Arsenal copy is only about $15. The artwork's nice, but it's a little bit lackluster in foil. Mind's Eye in this masterpiece set could be the premier version of Mind's Eye for people who want a foil copy. Hangerback Walker. Very, very, very inexpensive right now. It's down to about $3. This is an eternal playable card. It is really low because it's been printed and is super easy to get a hold of currently. This could be the premier version of Hangerback Walker. My guess is that it's going to be pretty low when it comes out, and I'm going to pick up a place out of these masterpiece Hangerback Walkers. Such pretty artwork on it, too. Painter Servant. Oh, I don't even know what to say about this card in here. I hate this deck as a blue player. If playing against blue players, I love this deck. 
People who played in Legacy need four of them. There could be significant value long term to this. The artwork is just so pretty. It has multiple colors in it. It really looks like the painter's servant. Very, very, very cool. I'm happy with this artwork. I like this inclusion, even though it's a real niche market for Legacy. It's a super powerful card. Chromatic Lantern, one of my EDH favorite cards out there. Wonderful card, cool new artwork on it. Long term, this could have incredible value to it. Sword of Feast and Famine. People like swords. People love foil swords. The Judge foil on Feast and Famine is about $45 right now. The regular Feast and Famine is only $15 because it was in the modern event deck. This is a great card, really cool new artwork on it. I could see this having some serious long-term value. Sword of Light and Shadow. This is one of my favorite cards overall. It's very good against death and taxes, especially in the mirror match. It doesn't see a lot of play, but it's also really good in EDH. This is wonderful new artwork for it. The regular runs about $30. The judge foil is about $40 to $50. This could be the premier copy for people. This could be worth a significant amount more six months to a year from now. Scroll Rack. I was having a discussion recently with Alex West over this card. This may be one of the most powerful cards in all of EDH. The price is pretty reasonable because it had an Arsenal reprint in it. And this artwork is a very different feel to it from the Arsenal artwork. There's going to be people who want this foil copy over the Arsenal foil copy, and it's just a great card overall. I don't expect it to be much more than the Arsenal to start out, because EDH players are patient. They'll wait for packs to be open, they'll wait for it to hit its low point, and then it will disappear from the market and slowly but surely rise. Lotus Petal. This is one of those cards that was printed at Common, is a $5 Common. The foils for it are $50, and there's a lot of people who want foils for their deck. There's going to be giant demand on this super powerful card that is played in Legacy, it's played in Competitive EDH, it's played in Vintage, and this new artwork is just beautiful, really well done. This is going to be one of the all-stars of the set. We're moving into the cards that are just super popular at this point. Ether Vial may be the most played card on this entire list because everybody who needs Ether Vial needs four Ether Vials. Ether Vial is a $50 uncommon that has been reprinted at rare and still has incredible value. Anytime I put Ether Vials in my trade binder, they disappear almost immediately. And this is a beautiful copy of Ether Vial. I am super excited about this particular printing. I hope that it looks wonderful in foil. I'm going to be watching these very closely to see what the pre order price on them is. Mana Vault, first foil, incredible card. The alphas are $900, the betas are $600. I traded an unlimited recently, a white border unlimited for $100. People love this card. It is super powerful in EDH. It's super powerful in Vintage. And people want a premier copy of this to put into their decks. I predict that this is going to be one of the most popular of the Masterpiece cards, especially since it's got that radiating light coming out of the vault. It could be stunningly beautiful. Also, Lots of people looking to do cool stuff with their EDH decks are going to want a Mana Vault, and some vintage players are going to want it too. Mana Crypt. We just saw this reprinted, so I'm a little bit surprised to see it here. It is an EDH powerhouse. It's a wonderful card. Lots more people are playing it, but I question where the actual value is going to be. The buy list price on Mana Crypt's down to about $50 currently, or $80 for the original. Even the Judge Foil that was super popular for a while is down to about $130 for a buy list price on it. Those foil copies, less people are going to be interested in them if this is as beautiful as it could be in foil. I would avoid picking these up right now. These are going to drop in price, and the regular Mana Crypts are tough to move right now. So even though this is one of the absolute best cards in this set, Seeing back-to-back -back reprints on it 
even if this doesn't increase the supply, it has the psychological feel that there's more of them coming into the market and the market flooded of them, so the price is going to continue to drop. I am happy with this actually as an inclusion. It lets people know that just because something was printed recently doesn't mean that it can't be printed again and helps bring down prices overall. I know that's in a little bit of a contradiction of what I said at the beginning when I was talking about the reasons that they reprint cards like this, but the back-to-back -back printing does let people know that if there's demand for a card, if people are really interested in it, Wizards is going to print it. And I like that Wizards is doing that. Crucible of Worlds, oh my god. Crazy cool, fun card created by the community. People love this card. I throw it in my trade binder and it moves super quickly. I keep hoping they'll reprint it in a core set, maybe one without fetches so that it won't warp the entire environment, but we haven't seen it anywhere like that. This new artwork is stunning. It is beautiful. I can't wait to see it in foil. This could be the premier copy. This could be a $100 plus card long term. Mox Opal. This is a four of in multiple decks. It is a super powerful mox. It is the mainstay mox in modern. I can definitely see this card having significant value. I like the new artwork for it. The new artwork shows multiple colors on it, which is one of the things that's so cool about this mox is that in your affinity deck, you can get those splash cards that you need with mox opals. This artwork is stunning. The original artwork is very, very nice also, but this could end up being the premier version of Mox Opal for people who are trying to bling out their decks. Sword of Fire and Ice, everybody loves a sword. The sword in Modern Masters is beautiful. That Chris Ron artwork is super popular in foil. Non-foil copies also have a really nice value to them. This is a playable sideboard and even main deck card in Modern. It's super powerful in EDH. This new version is going to have significant value to it. Soul Ring. This is an interesting one. Soul Ring is by far the most powerful ramp spell in Commander. People love this card. It's been printed in all the Commander decks and it still has value. There are two copies of it that are out there, the Alpha Beta and the Judge version, that have significant value to it. And my guess is the value on Soul Ring is going to come in below that Judge, below the Alpha Beta, but rather high, maybe the $75 range, because it is beautiful and there's people who want a really cool copy for their EDH decks. I can see this as one of the best cards in the set. Coming up soon is my Kaladesh top 10 list. If you have suggestions on what the top 10 cards are from Kaladesh, please leave them in the comments. If I see a really good list in the comments, I will highlight it in my next video. To ramp into your next deck, subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to support the channel, please check out the Patreon for Mythic MTG Tech. It helps me make these videos. Thank you to everybody who's over there supporting the channel. I greatly appreciate it. My next pack openings are on September 14th. If you would like me to open a pack on the channel, subscribe at the $2 level and you get a one-time pack opening. And until next time, choose the cards wisely.